Hello Yuki fans, Matavans here and welcome to a Ghost Trick Death Profile which I have been playing on my channel for Halloween. So it's called Trick or the Rude, you'll get that reference uh, later on in the video if you haven't seen those videos before. If you do, check them. you should go check them out on my channel. So they should all be, be the most recent ones, did like 5 uh, Halloween nights, uh, well Halloween day. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed those, and this is the deck profile I used. Uh, it's slightly it slightly changed before it's f the first video, but this was the deck I was using all Halloween, so all Halloween day. So yeah, this is essentially this. Uh, triple Jiangxi, it's a search for monsters, depending on the amount of ghost trick monsters you have on the field, on this flip summon, or flip up. So that's a nice way of getting into Spectre, if you feel your Jiangxi is going to be destroyed, or you want to go into something a bit more volatile like Jack Frost. Then Ghost Strip Doll, uses it in one of, um, at two or three, it's kind of a cloggy card, because it has a Mantry effect, it's more of a nice top deck. Its Mantry effect is that all, when she is flipped up during the end phase, you can then set all face up monsters onto the field on the field to face down the position and then special summon that ghost trick monster equal to that level or less. So that can get out your Zhangxi somewhat easily if you set a lot of monsters. Um, but she is a mandatory effect, so not always especially when you have um, knights on the field, you don't want to flip some of your doll. Then triple Jack Frost. Jack Frost is a very powerful monster. And hand trap. When your opponent declares a direct attack, you can change that monster into set into set position, and then special summon this monster in set position. So you can set your opponent's monsters, does not target, and you can get, get around King Gorm Gorm or Magic Spectres in that sense. Then Triple Lantern. I don't really like this one as much as the as uh, Jack Frost's Spectre because he he just he just, he just generally just negates the attack. He doesn't actually contribute anything further than setting, which gains advantage. So, Lantern does have more utility over Jack Frost because it also protects Ghost Trick monsters you control when, we attacked it, when they are targeted for an attack. You can then negate the attack and special summon that monster. Um, so, it does have some more utility than Jack Frost, but it doesn't have the most volatility. I usually use it as Exceed um, Fuel. Then, Triple Spectre, when Ghost Trick monsters is drawn by opponent's card effects or battle, it can then special summon itself and then draw one card so it's a draw engine for your deck sometimes use an exceed spam um, but not generally mainly after it's used its draw effect then it will be used as one of the exceed materials that you would go for then then double pot or aroma jar as it's actually called um, when it's flipped face up and flipped um, Face up, it can't be destroyed by battle. And during the end phase, if this card was flipped up on the field, gain 500 life points during each end phase. So that's very good. It can start to stall your opponent, may force them to use Castell or Exiton that they would rather save for something else. Then, double King of Bio, triple was a bit of a clog. Um, when it's normal summoned, you, you can uh, special summon one level one monster from your graveyard. This gives you an instant XC play like you would for Crane Crane, but level 1s are more applicable in this deck than the level 3s. And it's a spirit monster, so it'll be added back to your hand if you haven't used it as an XC material this turn. So that's kind of that's quite nice. Uh, 3 was clock. Um, Ghost Troop Mary, I'll use this as a one off because I don't really like the card. When you take damage, you can special summon a Ghost Troop from a monster from your deck to your, deck to your field. By discarding this card, it gets around Dark Law's restriction on cards going to the graveyard, so it is quite good in that sense. And you can special summon out your Zhangxi, hopefully, and that will be great to do so. Um, but if you have two or three of them, it kind of clogs. Then onto spells, we have Regeki, which is staple. Two pot dualities. I was also running two upstart goblins with this. But the next card, the next card we're going to talk about, replaced upstarts because it's a lot more needed in the deck. Duality is essentially because you don't special summon that much on your turn, so you can have this uh, turn of where you just set the cards and pass. Then two twin twister, very vicious, very powerful, great artwork. It requires you to discard one card, then target up to two spells and traps on the field, and destroy them, which is vicious as 
It could be a pseudo replacement to MST in certain decks, like Galaxy Cyclone is, is a replacement of MST in Inferno and Mill decks. Twin Twister has a lot of volatility and I've always needed this. Before I was running Twin Twister, I've always wanted an MST or something to get around the back row and the pendulum scales. Twin Twister gives us that. It replaces Upstart in consistency because of the, it's just better than the consistency that you'd get from Upstart. So yeah, that's essentially why I'm using Twin Twister. And then triple sort of concealing light, you set all your opponent's monsters, they cannot flip some, they cannot uh, change monsters position battle positions while it's based upon the field. It only lasts for two two of your turns, because it's destroyed at the end of the um, second standby phase. But it is a very vicious card. It can lock down your opponent, it's a pseudo floodgate, and just generally you'll love to top deck it. Then Triple Mansion, the Parade and Museum are not really worth running. Parades is a pseudo run, because you can add Ghost Street cards from your deck to your hand, but your opponent doesn't take damage. Whereas Ghost Street Mansion halves all damage from non-Ghost Street cards or monsters. Um, so that is quite good. There's no Ghost Street Spells or Traps that actually inflict damage, so it, all, it will only uh, really hit like burn cards or stop OTKs and will just protect you and buffer you while you can grind them down. Very good, and also protects your set monsters from being attacked, which is excellent. And also allows you to attack directly when set monsters are only your opponent controls. So that's quite good. Um, only control, only controls, I should say, I should say uh, you can control set monsters and then attack directly anyway. But um, if, they, if all monsters they have are set, then you can then just attack directly. So that's quite good. It's a free of, um, I don't run Terraform to search it out because I don't really need to search it out. I can search it out with um, Angel of Mischief instead. Then two Air Force um, or Storming Mirror Force. It's a very powerful card. It returns all face-up attack position monster your opponent controls to your hand. It's better than Mirror Force in this current climate because Mirror Force destroys and there are a lot of cards that don't can't be can't be destroyed and have that protection or gain pluses from being destroyed. So Storming Mirror Force has more volatility in that sense. Then triple Sandstorm Mirror Force, or how it is now dubbed Bur Burying Mirror Force. It is a very powerful card, it's what the deck is named after, it's why, I'm and why I played the Ghost Tricks for Halloween. It's basically because Trick or it's got, my deck is called Trick or Derude, that is very much a tie-in with Sandstorm Mirror Force. Hopefully you get the reference, I'm really bad at my jokes. Um, Essentially, change all uh, attack position monsters when they attack to face down, position, face down defense position. They cannot change their battle position, so they're permanently set unless you do something to switch it. Um, so, probably something like uh, Book of Tayu, but it's highly unlikely you're going to do that anyway. So, Sandstorm Mirifos locks down your monster, opponent's monsters and gives you a pseudo lockdown which you will eventually get with Knight and Scares. So it's a great card, great support for Ghost Tricks, and I'm saying this now, I'm gonna, I believe the next uh, Mirror Force will be a Blizzard Mirror Force that banishes cards. I'm just saying it now, it just looks like it will be the theme. And then Triple Ghost Trick Scare, one of the best Ghost Trick support cards you've got. It can target any number of face down position monsters you control, change them to face up, and then set monsters equal to the amount, equal to or less than the amount of monsters you flipped up. So that's very vicious, does not target to your opponent's monsters, so you can get around magic specters and can set up things with knights. So it's a very powerful card, it's also a very defensive card, if you only have one version monster, they only have one attacking monster, that can stop that battle phase dead in its tracks. Then get straight go around. This is like a pseudo ghost trick scare, and does the exact more or less the exact same tag. It's a ghost trick monster, flips it up, then flips one of those monsters down, and it can do the vice versa. So it has a lot more um, access than than scare does, but it's not exactly what you need. And it can flip some of your own monsters that are not ghost trick. Say that, that option did get to hand to me against kaiju which it allowed me to go for game that turn, thanks to go around. And then one Ghost Trick Knight, the essential card that locks down your opponent. While you control a Ghost Trick monster, your opponent cannot flip summon. 
That's essentially it, it's a floodgate. It's a very vicious floodgate. You can scare your opponent's monsters into face down position, then bring out your exceed monster, and then have a full lockdown with Ghost Trick Knight, meaning they can't flip some of their monsters. If they have five monsters on the field and you set them all, that's extremely vicious. Say you use Thoughts Conceal Light so you can have it as a backup, and it's just so powerful against Synchro and Exceed decks. This deck has a lot of volatility against Synchro and Exceed decks. Not as much against Fusion and Ritual decks, but I'll trip you some of the decks. But Synchro and Xyz are really hurt by stuff like this, especially Sandstorm, Mirror Force, and Ghost Street Knight. And then the other effect is when it's destroyed by our opponent's card effect, your opponent cannot attack, declare attacks for the rest of the turn, which is a little bit of a nice defensive uh, way of using it. And it can be added back through since it's a Ghost Street card. So yeah, onto the exceeds. I half of these I didn't go into because I didn't need them. Mainly gone into the Ghost Trick Exceed monsters, but they're in there just in case. Utopic Future, uh, I, this is the one of obviously, um, can be done through two Dark Lords, but it was when I was using Ghost Trick Breaking deck, and I don't use that anymore because it didn't prove to be effective with Mansion. So Utopic Future, I, I don't think I'll ever go into. One Slacker Magician, Potential Monsters and Stall. It wants to tell you copies destroy my battle, and when it be targeted by a card effect, it can attach an Exceed material and negate the activation if you do destroy it, so it has a lot of built in protection there. One, Utopia Roots, basically like Utopia just for rank ones. Triple Dullahan. Dullahan is very, ne very needed in this deck. If you go for the level 3 centric deck, you would go for like. Double or triple Alucard and Stellar Dullahan, but I'm going for the level 1 build, which is kind of nicer. I'm not using Wear Out, though. I, I think I had the chance to use it, but it's generally not as good because you have to, um, you have to, if you, you could take 2000 damage, and that's not what I want to take. So, Ghost Trick Dullahan gains 200 attack for each Ghost Trick card on the field, including itself, so that can bring up a decent beat stick. And they can detach an XC material and during either player's turn and tag one face monster, have its attack until the end of the turn. So it can beat over a blue eyes white dragon. Essentially, in as long as you have another ghost Street monster on your field. Well, number two ghost Street monsters on your field. So that's nice, it gives you a chance to beat over with um, other monsters and just gives you ways around monsters with 2000 or more attack. So yeah, also has the other effect, which is the more used effect. When it's sent to the graveyard, tag one Ghost Trick card in your graveyard, add that to your hand. It's not a mandatory effect, but it is very good for comboing out, either getting back that knight you've lost already, getting back a scare or mansion, or even a hand trap like Jack Frost, Lantern, Spectre, maybe Mary, highly likely Doll, and Zhang Shi. So there's a lot of things you can go for. It gives it a nice toolbox and yeah, it's perfect to go into with King Tobias since it's a generic monster. Then finally, uh, Silent and Princess, right? I've made this once. Um, attached an Exceed material from this card, excavate the top card of your deck. And if it is a spell or trap card, you can add it to your hand if it's not, send it to the graveyard, which can add some mirror forces to your hand in that sense. But you can only use that effect once per turn. And the other effect is not um, generic. Then finally, the exceeds for gen for um, rank threes. I didn't go into any of these because I only use one level three. The other level threes I don't really like, except from Stein. Stein could be a one of in the deck, but generally you'll be making rank ones over rank threes. But you still need a little bit of engine just for the case that, that happens. So Fortune Tunes then mains Alucard, Brig Sword, which is like which is like Scrap Dragon for the deck, and Nightmare Shark, which is like Heartland Draco. Those were the ones I was going for. And then finally, Ghost Trick Angel of Mischief. Overlay onto any other Ghost Trick uh, Exceed, material, Exceed monsters except itself, as or except another copy of Mischief. It has it has two it has three effects. One, it can it can attach a Ghost Trick card from your hand to it, so it can refuel itself. The second is it can it can um, where it has ten Exceed materials, you win the duel. So it has a win condition, but I've never seen anyone complete that condition. And it's probably unlikely you're ever going to do so. And it also has the major effect of once per turn, detach one XC material from this card, add one Ghost Trick Spell Trap from your deck to your hand. Most likely, you will have Ghost Trick Mesh Chief overlaid on Dullahan, detach Dullahan to add a Ghost Trick 
night most likely, and then Gut Dullhound's effect will activate, which allows you to add a Ghostry Cow from your graveyard. So you get two searches for the price of one with Mischief. So that's very vicious, and essentially you will lock it, lock down your opponent with knights with all their monsters set through like Sword to Conceal and Light, Sandstorm, Mirror Force, or Scare, a Master Scare through this, and you'll have uh, Mischief on board to either beat down while under Mansion or defend with 2500 defensive points. So this deck was really fun. I really enjoy playing it. It has consistency issues. Every deck has consistency issues. But I hope you enjoyed playing it. I hope you hope you enjoyed Halloween week and yeah, thank you for watching. Please leave your comments below if you got suggestions for the jet for suggestions for the jet. I can't talk now, suggestions for the deck or suggestions for my channel in general. And please like subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see further content. And if you really enjoyed Halloween week, uh, definitely smash that like button. So thank you for watching, Madurant, signing out.